On today's video, how to set up the Sony ZV-1 with firmware 2 for OBS. And this is going to be the ultimate OBS setup for the Sony ZV-1. Make sure you have firmware 2, and if you got it in the camera, let's go. My name is Vic Barry, and for tips, techniques, and thoughts on making videos, please hit subscribe, especially if you find this video useful. Download OBS, install it, open it up, and then the next step really is figure out where you're going to position your camera. Now, this can go anywhere you want. This is completely up to you. What I've done, I've put it in front of me here. You can see it there, and it's hanging precariously. No, it's not. Maybe it is. It's on a small rig tension arm. So this is clamped onto a mic boom that I've got behind here, and then I can move the camera around as I need be by just unloosening the tension arm and just doing whatever. Now, you don't have to do this mode. You can put it on a little tabletop tripod. You can put it wherever. That's entirely up to you. But this is the setup that works for me, and I think it's pretty flexible. I can take it on and take it off when I want. Now, that's where to position the camera. And then the next step is basically turn on the USB streaming mode, plug in your USB cable, and then you're good to go. So let's jump into OBS. And it's going to be blank. And I know if it's your first time using OBS, it's going to be like, <laughs> it's fine. Trust me, it's fine. It's not that much of a head wreck. Firstly, on the scenes, we've just the default scene. This is just one scene that we're going to have. All right. And we can do other stuff later on. But let's just start off with one scene. In the sources, we want to add video because we've got video camera. So it's video capture device and we'll call this Sony ZV-1. You can call it whatever you want. Just make sure create new is ticked and then select OK. On the next box that pops up, you're going to see Sony ZV-1, which you can see right now it's got it selected or you can see other cameras as well. So literally as is, I'm not going to change anything here. I'm just going to have the Sony ZV-1 in. You might have to dig around in some of the settings, but I think for best part, you're good to go. So I'm going to select OK. And then this is it. We've got our camera screen here. Hi. And what do we do now? It's like it doesn't fill the screen big. So we got to drag this down. And keep in mind with the Sony ZV-1 via USB streaming, it's only 720p. Now I'll talk about streaming settings in a bit, but keep that in mind. So this is it. This is a setup. It's video. It, it, it looks great, right? Now we've got no audio. So there's a couple of different things that we can do with the audio side of it here. We can use the onboard audio on the Sony ZV-1. And to use the onboard audio on the Sony ZV-1, what we need to do is add audio input capture by hitting plus again. I'm gonna call this Sony ZV-1 onboard mic. You can call it again, whatever you want. I'm gonna select okay. And then on the device, we gotta select microphone ZV-1. Select okay. We can see if we scroll down, we're actually having some levels here and we can adjust our levels within OBS or we can press the function button and adjust the levels if you've got it set up in the customized menu on the Sony ZV-1. So if you're seeing lots of red, then you gotta turn it down. Before we make the video look a little bit more cinematic, what about making the audio that little bit better? So there's a couple of ways of doing that. We can just keep using the onboard mic in the Sony ZV-1. We could plug in something like the Saramonic XR XM1. And as you can hear, that makes a very big difference. But what about if you don't want to use any microphone from the Sony ZV-1 and you've got an external microphone that you want to use? So I've got this Rode into USB mic here. Really nice mic, good price, and it sounds insane. So I'm just going to drop this down here and then to use this with the Sony ZV-1, we got to set up another audio input capture device. Again, very, very simple. Let's just select the plus audio input capture. And I'm going to call this Rode USB. Select OK. And then on the device, we got to find it. So here it is into USB mini. Let's select OK. And that's it. Now we no longer want to use our onboard mic here, so we can just select the eye icon and turn it off. And if we look now, we can see the Rode USB mic, we're talking through that. Now here's the thing, with this, it might look out of sync. If things are out of sync with the Sony ZV-1 and your external mic, then you have to go fiddling. So right click on the mic, which is the Rode USB one in my case. I'm gonna select advanced audio properties. And then we got to look for a mic here, which is there. And then we got to go our sync offset. Start with 100, select close, see where it goes. Is it in sync? And what I tend to do is just record 
locally by starting and stopping recording with the OBS inbuilt recorder and see how it sounds. In my case, I found that 200 milliseconds or thereabouts seems to go very well. And here's a super quick tip as well to help you really sync the audio. Clap. And then you can see exactly how far ahead or how far behind the audio actually is. I spoke about OBS settings at the start of the video and they are very, very important. You might get some dropped frames. And if you're seeing some dropped frames, essentially things are gonna start skipping, all right? That's not good for your viewers who are watching your stream. Keep in mind, one of the big things that's gonna cause drop frames is the resolution and the bit rate, especially the bit rate. So basically, the more bit rate that you're going to use for your stream, the better it will look, but also it's gonna suck the life out of your bandwidth. So if you don't have super fast internet in the house, then to change the bit rate within OBS, and this is vital if you are seeing drop frames, hit settings. And then we want our output. So this is the magic number here. This is where it all needs to change. I never really go above 2,500. I have decent-ish internet, so it's like 100 megs down and it's like 20 megs up. So this is kind of the peak where I'm gonna push it. I'm not gonna push it much more, especially if you've got other people in the house who are on iPads and Netflix and whatever else they're doing. And the next thing to really keep in mind is that the Sony ZV-1 actually only sends a 720p signal via USB. Now, you're not going to be streaming 4K via USB, right? But if you select the video here, my output is active, so I can't really change it here. But what you need to do is take a look at the canvas resolution and the output resolution. So the output resolution is what's actually being sent out to, in this case, YouTube. You can change this to 1080 if you want, but anything more, you need super, super fast internet. You need a decent computer. And again, that bit rate, that's the magic number where it can all fall down. Speaking of having things fall down, lighting. Obviously your audience wants to see it, right? Hello, maybe they don't. <clears throat> lighting can really make or break a stream because your audience wants to connect with you, they want to see it. So I've got some lights here, I've got one there, I've got one up there right now that's turned off. I can turn it on like this. And now it's made a bit of a difference having that light on. But what if you don't have any lights? So now I've only got that blue light behind me, that stereotypical YouTube blue light. But I don't have anything else. So as we can see here on the actual stream, it doesn't look great. I've got this one light over here, which does make a little bit of a difference. So we could position that there. That's a little bit dark, but this is my setup. So yours might be a little bit different. So let's say I just turn this Ulanzi light off. Now I've just got the blue light. You've got no lights, buy lights. It's a huge help. But if you don't, if you can't afford it or you don't want to get them right now, what you could do is the cheapest and most cheerful lighting hack ever. Google Chrome is an amazing light. You're like, what? Okay, let me, let me show you. Google Chrome is an amazing light. This is just a blank tab that I've opened. And as you can see, it's made a huge difference. So now you can actually see my face. So if you haven't got any light, then boom, you're going to look a lot better by just using a blank Google Chrome tab. Easy, free, cheap, cheerful. Now, speaking of making things look good, what if you could make your actual stream a little bit more cinematic looking? So we can go from this to this. And as you can see, this now has turned me into a little bit more cinematic looking. The blues are a little bit more teal and the skin tones are a little bit more warmer and a little bit more orange. So basically this is a lot that I've applied a lookup table and that's changing all the yellows and kind of reds a little bit more orange and all the blues are going to be a bit more teal so you're going to have different results depending on what you apply this lot to and how it looks so for me i really really like how this looks right now and to do it super super simple right click on your video source which in this case as we call if you remember was sony zv1 on the bottom one here which is the video section select the plus symbol select apply lot click ok and then dig out your lot and that's it. And you can change how powerful that is by just bringing it down, the amount or bringing it up. So I like to leave this at full whack essentially. And that's it. I've left a link in the description for you guys to pick up this lot as well. Really exclusive one-off. It's a dedicated OBS lot. As you can see, it's incredibly easy to get the Sony ZV-1 looking great and sounding amazing within OBS in just a couple of steps. So here's the thing, right? If you're not on firmware 2.0, 
you got to use the imaging edge thing which is all oh, hit and miss the pain in the butt so if you're not in firmware 2.0 there's a video here that will take you through the exact setup and it's really easy to set up the new firmware i'll see you in the next video and until then hit the like button hit subscribe and i'm gonna hit this <laughs> don't stop fighting for yourself i know i screwed up the life yeah yeah ah, nobody cares right